Today we're going to be grading pages 104 and 105 in your vocabulary workshop book. So again, make sure you have something to grade with that is not the same um, thing that you wrote with initially. And make sure you're grading your paper accurately. So let's get started. An end to slavery. Before the Civil War, many Northerners condemned. So you should have written that in the blank and of course I'm going to come up here and mark it off so I can keep track of which ones I've used. So many northerners condemned slavery as a terrible evil but few wanted to go to war because of it. Abraham Lincoln too personally hated slavery but was prepared to accept it if by doing so the Union could be preserved. Once the war began, however, many of the no in the North argued that the time had come to abolish slavery. And mark it off up here. Once and for all, in 1863, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation freeing the slaves in the states of the Confederacy. We've talked about that. Moving on. Abraham Lincoln's enemies called him a dictator. And we will mark that one off. Because he exercised so much power during the war, illustrators and photographers accompanied Union troops during some of the war's bloodiest campaigns, leaving us an important and sad visual record. of the horrors experienced by the soldiers on both sides of the conflict. Some African Americans who have descended from slave families have passed along dramatic stories of their ancestors' experience. Now, I want to look at this word descend, all right, because this is sort of where we think about it like an elevator. So I'm on the second floor and I'm going to descend to the first floor. But don't forget this second part of the definition, to come or be handed down from the past. And that's the way it's used in this sentence. So people descend from other people. They come from people in the past. All right, moving on. Drought leads to hunger. Did I mark out descend? I did. All right, without enough water, plant fibers dry out and become brittle. My clue there was this to tell me that it was brittle. If a drought lasts for a long time, mark out brittle, um, plants and crops die. If too many plants die, insects have no food. And the birds and animals that prey on insects then lose their food supply too. This is a vicious cycle. The threat of famine, and I'm going to mark that one out, can drive animals great distances in search of food. If these animals do not expand... Their hunting area, let me mark out expand, they too will starve. So if they're just in this one tiny little area, they may not be able to find enough food. So their hunting area has to expand or get bigger and bigger in, able, in order to find food. A teacher on a budget, oh, that is the truth. It would help our teacher a lot to have a laptop a portable, let me mark that out, computer that she could take back and forth between school and her home. She has asked businesses to donate equipment that they no longer need. So far, many businesses have answered her appeal. And I'm going to mark that out with computers for our classroom. It has been a very thrifty 
way of modernizing our classroom because it has cost hardly anything at all. All right, so up here, let me mark out thrifty. And I am going to mark how many I got right over 12 and box it in. And then we're moving over to the funny page, page 105. All right, a dictator is most likely to be loved. I don't think so. To be honored. I don't think so. To be elected. Not usually. To be feared. Letter D. If a book appeals to you, you will probably read it. That sounds good, but let me read the rest. It is probably very long. Well, not for most. It is probably boring. Well, that wouldn't appeal to you. And you will never read it. No comment. Letter A. Which would most likely be condemned? Promptness. That's being on time. I don't think we'd complain about that. Cruelty. Perhaps. Generosity. Kindness. No. We would condemn someone who is cruel. A thrifty person would give all their money away. Probably not. Never buy anything on sale? Ooh, definitely not. Count every penny? Probably. Leave a generous tip. Now this is one of those where you may be able to make an argument for some of those, but the best answer for someone who's thrifty is that they count every penny. They don't want to waste anything. So letter C is the only right answer. If a rule is abolished, like let's say uniform rule, wouldn't that be fun? Okay, so if that rule was abolished, it must be obeyed? No. It is in effect only one day? No. It lasts forever? Well, it probably will, but not if it were abolished. It is no longer in effect. All right, which is a visual aid? A cane? Mm, I feel like that's more of a ambulatory aid. A set of false teeth? Seems like a dental aid. A crutch? Mm, that's like a cane. A pair of glasses will help you with your visual issues. So letter D. All right, number seven. If a famine struck, water would be scarce? No, I don't think that's what a famine's about. Food would be scarce? That sounds right. Money would be scarce? Mm, no. Gasoline would be scarce? No. A famine is about food. Which is a bird of prey? Oh, my word. Now, they're all birds. But you got to ask yourself, which of these is going to really go hunting for something? A little cute yellow canary. A red robin. A little hummingbird that just flies in one place all the time. Or a hawk. It's definitely a hawk. Which might you descend? A ladder. I could see that as being right. A lake. I mean, you could. A lily? I'm going to go with no on a lily. And a lasso? Mm -mm. Now, could I swim deeper into a lake and descend? Yes. Could I walk down the rungs of a ladder? Definitely. So I think A is the one that makes the most sense. So A is the answer. If my waistline expands, I get taller, oh, if only. Bigger around the middle, shorter, smaller around the middle. So if my waistline, exp it's like this question was built for quarantine. Bigger around the middle. If something is brittle, it breaks easily, it freezes quickly, it is hard to see, it is easy to carry. Well, the definition itself tells me that it's A. Last one. Which type of house is meant to be portable? Oh, a 15-room mansion? That would be hard to move. A house trailer? Hmm, 
I feel like those are on wheels. A log cabin or a schoolhouse. Letter B is the best answer. All right, so up here at the top, however many you got correct, over 12 and box it in for me. And now today, after you've graded 102, 103, 104, 105, you are gonna snap pictures of all of those plus snap me a picture of 107 even though we did not grade it. And I want you to send all of that to me in an email. So 102, 103, 104, 105, and 107. We did not do 106 to my knowledge. All right, guys. Well, have a good day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.